Hello Internet! I am RD Lady and in this video I'm gonna show how I 3D printed the Bulbasaur statue from the game and anime Pokemon. But before showing how I 3D printed the Bulbasaur, I would like to show where I found the 3D model of the Bulbasaur. There is a website called Thingiverse and this website has many 3D models available for download. All these models can be downloaded for free and you can download these models already in STL format which is the format supported by most of the 3D printers. This website may be a very useful and critical resource for everyone that is starting your first 3D prints. And the process is very fast and easy. You go to the Thingiverse website, you search for the 3D model that you want you download it and you send it to the 3D printer. And then you can print this 3D model as easy as downloading and printing a PDF in a normal printer. So this is what I did for 3D printing the Bulbasaur statue. I went to Thingiverse website and I searched for a Bulbasaur planter, which is a Bulbasaur statue, but in its back it will just have an empty space where we can put any real, any actual plant. So we can use this statue as a planter as well. So I found this 3D model in Thingiverse and I just downloaded it. So it was downloaded the way it is, I didn't have to perform any 3D modeling or any editing in the model and I could print this model the way it was downloaded. Once I have downloaded the 3D model of the Bulbasaur in STL format, I could open this model directly in the software of my 3D printer. The 3D printer will take this 3D model of the Bulbasaur and will prepare it for printing it layer by layer, as if the model was split into many horizontal slices. And it will print these slices one on the top of the other, until the model is completely printed. As I mentioned in the previous video, my 3D printer is the DaVinci Junior. So I use the software from the DaVinci Junior to visualize the STL file that I have downloaded from Thingiverse and also for preparing this STL file to send it to the printer. And this is a little summary of all the settings that I have used for this 3D print. This little summary also shows how long this 3D print is gonna take and how much material it's gonna spend for this 3D printing process. I set the printing layer size as 0.2 millimeters. It's acceptable for printing the model and performing a good finishing layer with sanding, priming, painting and making the model looking pretty good. So let's start the 3D printing process and I'll provide more information on how I perform the 3D printing and how I did the finishing and the painting of this 3D printed model. And I was talking about layer resolution, which is the size of the layer of plastic that is deposited by the printer during the printing process. So, as I have mentioned, a resolution of 0.2 is acceptable for making a nice print and do a good finishing in the 3D statue. But the best resolution that my 3D printer can do is 0.1 millimeters. But there are 3D printers that are much more expensive than this one that can print in much better resolutions. So they can reach resolutions like less than 0.05 millimeters or even better than that. This resolution or layer size will result in a much better model with much less imperfections and much better details. Later I'll show this 3D model much closer, so you'll be able to see all the imperfections that a 0.2 mm resolution can generate. Another thing that I have changed from the default settings for this 3D print was the 3D printing speed. I changed from a medium speed to a low 3D printing speed. I did this for allowing the previous 3D printed layer solidify better before the next printed layer comes on the top of it. Decreasing the printing speed can be used 
for solving certain problems that happen when, for example, when you see that some filament strings are generated between pieces of the 3D model that are there where they shouldn't be. This means that the next layer of plastic is being deposited when the previous layer is not very well solidified yet. Another problem that can happen when the printing speed is too high is that the model starts to get skewed or you start to see some deformations in the 3D model. So setting a slower printing speed can solve these problems. And as I mentioned before, this 3D printer is a very cheap 3D printer. It costs now only $250. This 3D printer came already assembled. It's not like the other 3D printers that have the same price and they come only in parts that you have to assemble. So this saved a lot of time and a lot of adjustments that I would have to do in a non-assembled 3D printer. And another interesting thing, if you watch the previous video where I show the 3D print of the Sentinel statue, you saw that that 3D printing process required support materials. The Sentinel statue required support materials because it had parts that were hanging and those parts would fall if we didn't print any support materials below those parts. In this case here in the Bulbasaur statue model, this is a very simple 3D model, so it doesn't have any parts or details in the model that are hanging that would fall if we don't print with the support. So I didn't have to set or to generate any support material for this 3D print. So these more simple models will be easier to print because they don't require any support material. I don't know if you recall from the last video, but for printing only one wing from the Sentinel, which was much smaller and required less material than the Bulbasaur, it took more than 10 hours for printing that wing. And here for printing the Bulbasaur model, which is larger than the wing, but doesn't require any support, it will take about the same time. So the 3D print can be a little more complicated and take a little bit longer if it requires support material. And I would like also to take this opportunity to explain about how I did all the finishing and the painting of this 3D model. After the last video where I shown how I 3D printed the Sentinel, some subscribers asked how I did all the finishing, how I made the surface of the 3D printed statue become so even. There are two main types of material used for 3D printing. In my case, my 3D printer supports only PLA or polylactic acid, which is a biodegradable polymer made from corn starch. In the case of some other printers, they also accept ABS. ABS is another kind of synthetic plastic that is similar to the plastic used for making the Lego pieces. ABS is very soluble in acetone. So if you print in ABS, you just have to leave your 3D printed statue inside the box or a glass container that has acetone in the bottom and then the acetone vapor will melt all the external layers of the 3D printed statue. And all these layers will fuse together, making a much more even surface and removing all the imperfections of your 3D printed statue. PLA is not that soluble in acetone vapor at room temperature. The only solution that I found to use acetone to give the same finishing to PLA as it's done in ABS is to boil acetone using a source of heat so this hot vapor will have contact with the surface of the 3D printed model and with this hot vapor of acetone then the PLA surface will melt just like the ABS model. But it's a little dangerous to work uh, boiling acetone, which is very highly flammable. So in the end, I decided to do the classic finishing, just using sandpaper and a drill tool. So I basically started the finishing of this model with a lot of sanding. I start using a drill tool and 
a 300 grit sandpaper. Once I removed the large imperfections, then I applied a layer of primer. It needs to be a sandable primer that has some filling properties to fill out some holes that are caused by imperfections in the 3D printing process. So this primer will make the surface more even. And then after applying the primer, I did a bit more of sanding with a more fine sandpaper. 600 or 800 grit sandpaper should be enough. And then I applied again the primer and I did priming and sanding for three times for getting a more even surface in the model. So after removing the imperfections by sanding and priming, I could finally start to apply the paint. And for the painting I used an airbrush paint to paint all the large green parts that you see in the statue. And I hand painted all the smaller details like the eyes and the small dark green spots that Bulbasaur has in its body. And to finish, I added a layer of varnish. This varnish spray over the paint will make the paint last longer and will protect the paint against scratches. So the painting will become more resistant using this last layer of varnish over everything. For the details in the eyes, I used acrylic paint. And for all the green areas in Bulbasaur's body, I used animal paint because the animal paint gives a more shiny result. So that's basically what I did to do all the finishing and painting of this Bulbasaur statue. I also applied this method for most of my 3D printed statues. This is the final result after 3D printing, sanding, priming and painting and finishing the 3D printed statue of the Bulbasaur from the anime and game Pokemon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give a like and to subscribe to this channel to receive more 3D printing videos. And don't forget to follow us in social media, in Twitter and Facebook. I see you next time. Bye bye.